thank you to you all for um, giving up a, a Friday. I think for many of you, it's in the school holidays. So it, it speaks to the passion you have um, for economics. And that passion is important because I think many of the issues that our society deals with are going to be more easy to deal with if people have an understanding of economics. Whether that's how to create good jobs, how to deal with climate change, how to create the right incentives for people to behave well, even how to deal with the geopolitical issues. So most of the issues that we uh, face as a society are going to be easier to deal with if people understand economics. So you have a, a critical role in teaching the next generation, even if you're not going to teach economists, you're, going, you're teaching people the basic principles of economics. So thank you for doing that, and thank you for giving up a whole day and um, spending it with us. We're very keen to help you do whatever you uh, have all we can. As uh, I think probably Jackie's talked about during the day, we have a lot of resources. I understand the chart pack is one of the most popular resources, but um, we're always trying to, to add to the stable of resources we're offering you. So if you've got um, ideas for things that would help you in the classroom, don't be shy in letting Jackie and the team know because we, we want to help you. You've got an important job to do and we want to do what we, ever, what we can to, to help you. I know um, from my own experience the power of a, of a great teacher who's passionate about um, economics. I went to high school in Wagga Wagga in country New South Wales and in those days you could do three unit economics. Well, you can't do it now unfortunately. Uh, I think you can do three unit kind of ancient modern history but you can't do three unit economics. Go figure, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem right to me but um, I, I started um, economics in year 11 and I had a, a fantastic uh, teacher by the name of Mrs King. And, she was incredibly um, passionate in, in teaching um, her subject. And I remember being really intrigued by the basic problem of um, welfare maximization and the idea that somehow if, we, if um, things were set up properly, the society could maximize the size of the pie and then some combination of the invisible hand of the market and government intervention could make sure that that pie was allocated in a way that it, maximized our aggregate welfare in society. As a young person, I thought that was kind of incredibly powerful. Big pie, and we allocate it to make sure that um, the society has maximum utility. So I found that um, intriguing. And I remember when I was in year 11 and 12, wanting to understand really how this works. I thought, well, you know, in a country with kind of 20 million people, how can it be that in, uh, in decisions taken by individuals could maximize the pie and allocate it in a way that maximized our collective welfare and she Mrs. King was able to kind of bring that concept a lot to life and show how um, economics could um, help our society uh, make people live better lives and kind of maximize our aggregate utility so my interest in economics started in the classroom in Wagga Wagga in year 11 and then year 12 uh, I liked it so much that I spent eight years at university studying economics, four here in Sydney at the University of New South Wales, and then four in the United States at MIT in Boston. Not everyone's going to do that, uh, I understand, but for me it was kind of like this powerful idea of welfare maximization and how the market and the government could, could do that. You know, that kind of drove me. And then, so I've now been at the Reserve Bank for 43 years. The last um, seven as governor, I came straight here from high school. Because when I finished high school at in the end of 1979, the Reserve Bank had trouble hiring people who were interested in economics. It's hard to believe. <laughs> now, now we get to pick of the best graduates from the universities. And fortunately, when I finished high school, the Reserve Bank uh, was desperate to to hire anyone who was in, interested in economics. And I'd done three unit economics, so I I came here and. Um, 43 years later, I'm still here. I remember um, in the late 70s when I was um, studying economics, learning about the topic of inflation. It was the great problem of the time. And I remember learning how cor uh, corrosive inflation was, how it hurt low-income people were most, it eroded people's savings, and it made it harder for businesses to plan and cut into people's living standards. So that was... Um, 
what I was learning in the late 1970s. And I remember writing a lot of practice essays for the HSC on the government's fight inflation first strategy. In fact, there may have even been an HSC kind of question that year in, in um, 1980 on that topic. Probably up until um, last year, probably haven't been talking much about inflation because it wasn't really that big an issue. But uh, as I reflect back on those years, I've been increasingly thinking I've uh, wished I'd kept those essays <laughs> that I'd written. <laughs> I'm sure they had some good ideas and would uh, help me today, but um, I didn't keep them. That was all a day of pen and paper, so there's no... But that was kind of... I, I remember learning about uh, the, the corrosive effects of inflation and uh, how it was really debilitating for society and the economy, and um, that's really stayed with me um, ever since. Over the last uh, year or so, we've had a very difficult job here to do at the RBN. Maybe you've talked about that today. Our job is to get rid of inflation because it hurts low-income people, it takes away uh, people's purchasing power, it erodes the value of savings and damages economic growth. So you know, we're really strongly committed to, as an institution, getting inflation back to the 2 to 3% range. I have to say it's a pretty unpopular job that we have. <laughs> In fact, I read in the press this morning two articles. One that said I was the most unpopular person in the country. <laughs> but one was even worse. It said I was the most despised person in the country. <laughs> so what we're doing um, is incredibly unpopular, at least in parts of the community. The press routinely are outside my um, house when I go to work in the morning filming me and my kids. Sometimes they follow me on the weekend to do into the golf course and show pictures of me in the paper playing golf saying how disgusting that is. Uh, anyhow, there's, there's endless commentary in the press about um, what we're doing, but we're strongly committed to getting rid of inflation because it hurts low-income people, hurts our economy, erodes people's savings. So we're, we're strongly committed to that. I think the experience that we've gone through this year really shows the value of operational independence of the central bank. Now, we're taking unpopular decisions that we think are in the best interest of the country. Now, as I say to the politicians when I go to the Senate estimates, the other committees, it's much harder for them to take these decisions because imagine if the politicians had to do what, uh, what my board has been doing this year. Whether it would have happened, I don't know. Uh, but it, you know, this operational independence of the central bank is incredibly important. You know, we're not always going to get it right, but I can assure you we're always trying to get it right. And in our board meetings, we're always talking about the national interest, what's the right thing to do by the country, not what the popular thing is. We don't have to get voted in, we don't have to get elected. We, we're very strongly focused on getting rid of inflation because we think the country's going to be, in the end, better off for that if we can do that. So we're subject to a lot of um, political and media criticism, but to the credit of the political class, they have never kind of put any pressure on me or my board on interest rates. There's a lot of media commentary, they're kind of talking all the time, but uh, when I speak to them, they've never ever tried to um, influence um, what my board does and um, what I do. I think they know if they tried could turn out badly for them. <laughs> so, but anyhow, whatever, whatever their motivation, uh, they, you know, and there's a lot of dis media discussion, but um, the politicians uh, haven't put any um, direct pressure on, on me or my staff. So that's kind of a credit to our system because they, they respect the operational independence. They know we're trying to do the best thing for the country. We won't always get it right, but they know we're always trying to get it right. Uh, how you teach monetary policy has probably changed over time. I remember when I was um, studying, it was all about um, over market operations and buying and selling government bonds and moving the money supply around and kind of getting interest rates to move. Well, that was how um, I was taught, maybe in teaching that not that long ago. But then um, hopefully you've moved to kind of we're moving the short term interest rate and kind of you know, maybe today you've covered how we did it, I'm not sure. But uh, in the last couple of years, things became even more complicated for you, I suspect, because you had to learn about the bond purchase program, the yield target, the term funding facility, the zero lower bound. So it's become 
my life became much more complicated by, I think yours probably did it as well, so I'm sorry about that. But more complicated means more interesting and more challenge for your students. I think that's, that's um, good. One constant, though, um, through the, um, the way you know, the change that monetary policy has been through is really the, the broad objectives of what the RBA has been trying to do. And again, I hope you've touched on those today, kind of price stability, we've talked about that, for employment. Uh, to my frustration, this doesn't get much discussion um, in the media, even by the politicians at the moment. I mean, it, it took Australia 50 years to get back to full employment. So for the last 50 years, there are a lot of kids and people who wanted jobs in the country who couldn't get them. Over the past year, almost everyone in the country who wanted a job could get one. They mightn't get the job they wanted, or the hours, or whatever it was, but you know, in the last year, almost everyone who wanted a job could get one. We haven't been able to say that for 50 years. I think that's something we should be celebrating, but you know, for some, whatever reasons we don't. But that's been one of our objectives, to get the country to full employment. And we've got that, we've got an inflation problem, but you know, youth unemployment's the lowest in, 50, in 30 years. A higher share of the Australian population have a job than ever before. The participation rate of women is very high, and it's all partly because of the monetary and fiscal policy response during the pandemic. So uh, we're about price stability, full employment, financial stability. You may have heard we're the banker to the government, so when you get a um, Medicare refund, I shouldn't say check because I hope you're not getting <laughs> checks. When you get a direct credit to your account from um, Medicare, it comes from um, the Reserve Bank and the computer systems, the systems we operate. And when you have to pay your tax, it goes to the government's account with us. Uh, we run a, a very safe and secure payment system. So I hope you all have a pay ID so that you can make instantaneous payments. You know, you can move money between any two bank accounts in the country in five seconds. I hope you take advantage of that. Remember, you kind of, once upon a time, it used to take three days. Well, now, it can take five seconds, and that's uh, largely because of a system that the Reserve Bank um, built, and um, we print and distribute the country's banknotes. And did you talk about this today? How we're kind of the five-dollar banknote uh, with the passing of a Queen Elizabeth, where we're replacing um, Queen Elizabeth with a, um, a design that honours the the history and culture of the first Australians. So, um, to my great surprise. There are 18 $100 notes out there for every single person in the country. 18 for every person. I don't know whether anyone in this room has 18. <laughs> uh, I don't. <laughs> and I don't know anyone who does. But anyhow, so there are a lot of banknotes out there. And so we, I think Australian banknotes are the, kind of the best in the world in terms of both the security devices and the colours and the kind of the imagery. So that's, a, that's another important thing for us to do. So full employment, price stability, financial stability, where the bank of the government, they operate the, the, um, the exchange settlement system and our bank notes. They're all things the Reserve Bank does. And they all come back to what I learned at high school, kind of trying to make the world the best place it can be with the resources that we have. That's what the Reserve Bank's doing. These are the mechanisms we have to do it. And each of those functions that we perform are critical to the functioning of our modern economy. So I, as I said, got into this from economics in high school, and I really hope that you're inspiring the next group of people who come ultimately come to the Reserve Bank, and hopefully one day one of your students will have the job that I've been lucky enough to have. <laughs>